Hello again, I'll be reviewing the Himi Jelly Gouache in this video. Before we do that, let's talk about what traditional gouache is. Gouache is an opaque watercolor and it can be re-wet and dried to a matte finish. It can also be used similar to acrylic paint in an opaque painting style. I have been using gouache for several years now and in the next section we will compare Himi Gouache to two well-known designer tube gouache manufacturers, Holbein and Windsor Newton. These are two very well-known designer gouaches. Holbein is about $11 per 5 milliliter tube, and Windsor Newton is about $11.50 for a 14 milliliter tube. That's a big difference. Now the Hemi gouache is about $5 for a 30 milliliter cup. That's a really big difference. So I was very skeptical to try the Hemi gouache for a long time because I just didn't know what was in the formula that kept it so jelly-like. For normal gouache, I usually keep it in the tubes until I want to use it. If I squeeze it out, then it hardens and it can be easily re-wet and reactivated, but the jelliness of the Himi gouache and the height made me super curious, so I wanted to compare it. Now my first impression is that this box is huge and so heavy. I was so excited because I thought, wow, I got so much paint for only 30 bucks. And this paint set comes with 24 colors, including some trendy colors like pink and lavender. The logo is a little dog and the word gouache is crossed out, so it made me wonder if this was really gouache. Look how big this is. I'm comparing it to an A5 journal. Okay, now let's open it. So inside is a big paint tray, which is really nice, and a thank you card, and three brushes. How cool, I love brushes. And they come in three different shapes and sizes. Now the paints are packaged with a peel off lid that reminds me of a jelly cup snack that I used to have when I was a kid. Now look at this 30 milliliter cup of paint. It's huge. I don't think gouache ever comes in a package this big. It is pretty easy to peel off. So let's open them all up. So I noticed there was like a layer of oil on top, so I'm just going to mix it all in before popping them back into the box. Made a complete mess. I washed my hands. I don't know how everyone on like TikTok and Instagram is able to open these Hemi gouaches so gracefully, but I made a complete mess. So I just cleaned myself up. I'm excited to finally give this a try. Um, it was a lot of prep work, you know, having to like um, mix it up and I'm kind of curious about the upkeep. I've heard like you can rehydrate your jelly gouache. Um, I'll figure that out when it starts drying up, but right now they're freshly out of the packaging. They're super hydrated, they're super gooey looking, and they have a lovely consistency. So I'm excited to give these colors a try, see how saturated they are and see how consistent the paint is. So let's start sketching. So right now I'm sketching a photo of a vintage kitchen with a 2H pencil. Basically, I'm just sketching the general composition and the shapes of the objects that I like from this photo. Now from this photo, the main colors I will be using is pink and brown and some minty blues. So I'll be mixing more of those colors. My first thought um, when I stuck my brush into the paint was that it's very thick and I wasn't sure how I wouldn't cross contaminate the paint. So I had to use different brushes, but when I used different brushes, I had to clean them and I was wasting paint. So that was, um, that's a conundrum. Now I forgot to do this initially, but to prevent paint from beading on my tray, like what's happening to the brown, I like to smear some glue stick on the palette, then wipe it off. 
This kind of gives the tray some traction when you're mixing your paint. Like I said before, this paint is definitely thicker than I'm used to. It kind of feels like I'm mixing acrylic gouache instead of traditional gouache. I tried adding a little water to it, but still the globs of paint stuck to my paintbrush and didn't want to come off. Here I'm testing these colors out. They're very pigmented, so it's looking good so far. So as you can see, I have a lot of paint stuck to my brush, so I'll be using that as the first layer to my background. Now, as I'm painting the first layer, I'm getting a little confused because this paint is feeling more like tempera paint than gouache. As I added more water to it, I noticed that it became a little more streaky, kind of like when kids use their fingers on tempera paint that's made with egg yolk. Let me show you what I mean by comparing this to my traditional gouache. So here I'm using the Hemi Jelly Gouache and you'll notice streaks when I go over it again with my brush. Now I'm reactivating some traditional gouache paint. I think this is Windsor Newton and you might notice that it's so much easier to mix and it's not sticking like globs to my brush. Can you tell how smooth this gouache is applying on the paper compared to the jelly gouache? I understand that you might have to layer it um, to get a very even consistency, but the jelly gouache is definitely feeling way cheaper and it's very reflective of the price. But the show must go on, so let's continue with this painting. Although at this point, I started to regret that I chose to paint such a large detailed piece. Why did I just choose to paint a vase of flowers or something? I just wanted to show you what was happening here while I was mixing my sea green color, I couldn't get this paint off and I didn't want to water it down a ton. And here I'm just mixing my traditional gouache again. All I did was spray some water on it and it's not sticking to my brush the way that the jelly gouache does. My suspicion is that the binder is actually acrylic. Maybe it's not like a high percentage of acrylic binder, so that's why we're able to still water it down. But I'll show you something else later which might make you think that there's probably a acrylic binder in this paint. Here I'm trying to use the gouache straight from the jelly cup instead of watering it down. But um, it looks like I still have to add some water to help it apply better. The impressive thing is that this paint is very saturated and can get very opaque, so I think it's still a bang for the buck. But if you want to experience real gouache, then you should try some more well-known brands. The white is very pigmented. You do have to wait for the previous layer to completely dry before applying another color or else you'll reactivate and pick up some of the color underneath. I also noticed that the raw and burnt umber browns were a tinge different from what I'm used to. It's a little off, so I had to add some other colors into the brown to make it look right. Alright, I'm almost done. Just going to add some color pencil, and I'm going to show you the second reason why I'm suspicious that the Hemi gouache has some sort of acrylic binder in it. Alright, I'm done. So let's look at the way that my paint dried. It's cracking and flaking off cleanly like acrylic. Now let me show you how my Holbein gouache looks like when it dries. They've been dried for like almost half a year. There's no crumbling or flaking. Anyways, I know nothing about paint formulas, but I just don't remember my other cheap gouache brands doing this. It's getting a little messy. I feel like I have to clean it off the tray or use a tray with wells. All right, another thing. The top layer of the paints are starting to harden and it's only been about half a day. So my final verdict, I think I may like it more in tubes. I don't really care that it's more acrylic-like. I would just accept it because it's a cheaper gouache. Um, but I feel like mixing the colors was hard without cross-contaminating 
Although I think it's a really fun container, a great idea, I would only recommend this to beginners who want to practice with cheap paints, but realize that there are better gouaches out there. Alright, on a different note, join my mailing list for a creative newsletter written to inspire you and with the occasional shop promos and updates. It'll be linked below, and thanks for watching! I'll catch you next time!